Hi guys, um, since this is our first video, um, we're gonna just, I'm gonna talk about a few housekeeping things really quick. Um, when I do make these videos um, and do them, they will probably be in Nearpod as you can see. Um, I am putting in the blank notes, so if you'd like to follow along and print out the notes and follow along, you can do that. Um, I'm not gonna slow down, um, so you just have to stop and rewind um, if you want to find out what the answers are, if you want to try it yourself and then, um, do it, however you, whichever is going to get you guys the most knowledge that you can and, and, uh, be the best for you, just do it that way. Um, if you want to just take notes on a piece of paper, that's fine. Whatever is going to help you learn the most. Coming to that, if you have questions, there's going to be a discussion thread in Canvas Make sure you're very specific in your question. Please don't just say, I don't understand everything. Be specific in what you don't understand. And then I will respond to that, that thread. Or one of you guys, if you understand the question and I haven't gotten back yet, can answer. Um, so we can help each other. Uh, if you have a question um, and there are questions already in the discussion, please make sure you've read it to see if um, that question has already been asked. Um, before you re-ask it, just so we're not having to keep repeating ourselves. I would greatly appreciate that since um, this is the first time we've had to do this. I'm just trying to um, curtail any any problems that there might be. So please try and read through the the answers and please be respectful of each other. Um, that's, that's all I'm asking as we go through this together. So, and I've just realized how many times I'm saying, um, so please forgive me for that. Um, <laughs> here we go. So we're going to go ahead on, move on. We're going to talk about graphing trig functions and what their equations are and what they mean. Uh, so we're going to go on f right there. I'm going to break this into three different parts. Um, so we're going to, we're going to kind of like we do in class, we're going to teach something and then you guys are going to work on some of the homework and we're going to teach and then work on the, some of the homework, teach and work on some of the homework. And then there may be a small Delta math assignment attached to each of these also. Um, but I'm not going to do any more than 12, 16 problems on a Delta math. It'll, it, at, at the most, um, I don't want to do very many problems because I know that your time and computer time is of essence also just like mine so it's it's not and it's not going to be very many and most things will be due like at, at least if it's delta math at least a month in advance but you guys try and do it because um the assessments we're 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 working out how to do the assessments as far as the checkpoints and we'll let you know for sure how that's going to be done soon so here we go um graphing trick functions So normally, when I do this lesson, you guys are figuring this out. Um, for each angle below, calculate the value of sine of x and cosine of x to two decimal places on the chart and graph the points. So if you'd like to figure it out, it's really easy. I'm In my calculator, I'm just going to do sine of 0, and I get 0. Sine of 30, sine of 45, sine of 60, sine of 90, sine of 120, right? And then I'm going to go through and do the same thing with cosine, and I get the numbers that I get rounded to two decimal places, and I graph them on the graph. And as you can see, the I, I color-coded it also, so um, the purple line is sine, and the green line is cosine. Um, that's what they look like. Uh, I just want to point out a few things. Um, let's see. Notice cosine starts here and sine starts here. Um, and then also notice where cosine bottoms out, crosses the x-axis, and is at those peaks. And that's where you really want to pay attention to when we're talking about sine and cosine. Where does it cross the x-axis? Um, what are the... Oh, probably should have been right there. I was a little off. Um, where are the peaks and where are the valleys? Um, where's the lowest and the highest? Oh, having a rough time here. Lowest and... Lowest and highest points um, 
on my graph and where do they cross the x-axis and where the, where are their starting points. So that's really what you need to pay attention to here. Um, so we're going to go to the next page. And the next page really is just um, convert, doing the same thing, only we converted our um, degrees to radians. So as you can see, I just did the same table. And zero, I converted 30 degrees to... 30 degrees to pi over 6 and 45 to pi over 4. Or I re remember our unit circle, I know that 30 degrees is pi over 6 and 45 is pi over 4. And then I graphed it again on my, um, this time on a coordinate plane that has my radians in there. If you notice, I've got 0, 2 pi, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And again, I'm going to pay attention to where it starts where it starts and my peaks, my x-intercepts and my valleys. Okay? And to do the same thing with sine, with cosine. Whew, valleys, x-intercepts and where it starts, okay? So here we're also going to talk about domain and range. And if it makes Um, whether I'm measuring in um, radians or whether I'm measuring in degrees. So what is my domain of sine? Well, my domain of sine, um, I've got arrows on the end, see? Arrows on the end. Oops, which one? Right, right here we go. Uh, so it means it goes on forever. So what is my domain? Well, my domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. And what's my range? Well, my highest point is 1, and my lowest point is negative 1. Are they included? Well, yeah, there's no points. So my range is negative 1 to positive 1. Okay? And what's the difference between sine and cosine? Well, just where it starts at. So my domain is the same, and my range is also the same. Oops. That should be, shouldn't it? That should, oh. Well, I'm doing really good today, you guys. There we go. There we go. Um, included. So my domain and my range are the same for that. Here we go on to talking about how to find this information for, well, we have a few definitions. Um, my midline is the horizontal axis that is used as a reference line about which the graph of a periodic function oscillates. It's also symmetric. Yeah, can't say it's symmetric. It is um, what, it's the line that divides the function in half, okay? So if you can see on this graph, it's my x-axis, and on this graph, it's the line y equals, so this is y equals 1, and this is y equals 0. Okay, it is a line, so I need to write it as a line. It is a line. Needs to be written. as a line okay so it needs to be written as a line when I when I'm answering questions about the midline so here we go the amplitude amplitude is the height from the center line to the peak or trough of a periodic function so here's my height here's my valley okay so my amplitude goes from the midline the midline up or the midline down. So the amplitude is half. How do I find it? I take my, mid, uh, add my, whoo, it's doing so good. Add my maximum height, add my minimum height, and I divide it by two, okay? Or I can count from the midline up, whichever is easiest for you to do. Um, there we go. 
Next word is the period. Um, period goes from one peak, um, one peak to the next or from any point to the next point. So I can go from this point to this point and that's my period from one peak to the other peak. Or I could go from this point to, let's see, this point right, to see where I start going back up at, sorry. Um, this point right here, okay, right above the line. That is still my period. So it's the same, one point to exactly the same point on the next time, the, the, the next point. Those are just the periods. Um, wherever it's easiest to read how far it is. And once we get to an example, you'll be able to see that. Um, and the last one we're going to talk about for now, uh, we have a couple definitions later, but for now it's frequency. It's the number of complete cycles in a 2 pi. So if this is um, 0 and this is my 2 pi here, okay, say this is 2 pi, here is one complete cycle. Here's two complete cycles. They kind of have it up there for you, but here's three complete cycles, and here's four complete cycles. So my frequency would be four. How many times does it make that complete cycle? And that's my frequency in two pi. Okay, so now we're going to just practice that. It says, identify the midline amplitude period and frequency of each graph. Um, so, Where's my midline? Well, my lowest point is negative three. My highest point is positive three. So halfway between negative three and positive three is zero. So y equals zero. What's my amplitude? Well, we already talked about it. It is three. My period. So the period is how far, how, how far is it from one peak to another peak? Okay, so here is one peak. And I go down and I come up to another peak. So I need to know how far that is. Well, here's my, if I look at my graph, um, from here to here is 2 pi. So this distance here is 2 pi. And it looks like from one peak to another peak, it's halfway. There's one. And here's another one. So there's 2 pi's. There's 2 two complete revel, complete troughs, two, two complete pieces from one peak to the other, um, complete revelations, however you want to say it, from one point to the other, from here to here, here's one, and here is two. So that kind of means my frequency is two, because there's two and two pi. Well, how far is my period? Well, half of two pi is... Pi, yeah. So one complete revelation in pi. Okay. So we're going to do that again. I think we have a couple of these to practice on before I'm going to send you off on your own again. So here we go again. Um, identify my midline. Well, my lowest is 0.5 and my highest, negative 0.5 and my highest is 0.5. So again, that means my midline is at y equals zero. My amplitude, my height is 0.5. Or I don't care, you could write it as a half. 0.5 and a half are the same. Um, so my period, so here's my, if I'm going to start here, right, and where's my next one at? It goes all, oh, I'm so good at tracing you guys, all the way to here. How many from how far is it from one to the other? Well, it's two pi. So that means my frequency is one, because there's only one complete revelation in in two pi. Okay. So next. Okay, so notice this about the notice about this graph. It's not measured in radians; it's in degrees. I can still do it in degrees. It's fine. I'm still going to do the same thing. My midline still is zero, so I've still got y equals zero, and um, my amplitude this time is four. 
okay? So I don't want to do red on red, so here we go. So from here to here, from there to there, how far is it? What's well, 120 degrees? Great. So how, how many degrees is 2 pi? Well, 2 pi equals 360 degrees. Awesome. So how many complete revelations do I have in there? I've got 1, 2, 3. So what is my frequency? 3. Okay. And that's what we're going to do. Um, so for now, you are going to... Um, Sorry, I forgot what uh, that was the end. Um, you're going to go ahead and do some problems. Um, I think you have a few to few problem, maybe six problems to do where you're going to find the midline amplitude period and frequency of off of graphs. Um, and then we're going to move on to the next video. Thank you. I will talk to you soon.